Okay, so we're going to be using Scratch again. So like last time, you type in Scratch. It's the top one that we're going to select and we click on Create. We get rid of the green boxes because we don't need them. Today, we're going to be creating a game. So we're going to be programming something that other people can play. It's going to be a game about catching ghosts. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of my sprite and get a ghost sprite and a scary-ish looking background. So if you can remember how to delete your sprite, you need to get to the bottom of the page and click on the little dustbin to get rid of that sprite. Then you go to choose a sprite and I'm going to type in ghost and choose my ghost. I'm then going to do the same for the backdrop. I'm going to write in spooky to see what comes up. Let's try this woods one. Oh, that's perfect. I'm going to move my sprite down here so it doesn't look like he is floating. OK, to begin with, I want my sprite to appear and then disappear. So I need to start with my triggers. When the green flag is clicked. And I need to go into looks because I want it to. Was it in looks? No, it's not in looks. In motion. It is in looks. I just couldn't see it. I'm looking for the show and the hide. So when the green flag is clicked, I want my sprite to hide. And then I'm going to wait for a moment before it shows again. So I'm going to have a look where the wait button is. Oh, there we are. Wait one second. And I'm going to go back to looks. So that I can show it. And I want to wait for one second. Again, let's just check when the green flag is clicked, my sprite will disappear. It will wait for a second. It will then show. It will then wait for one second. Now, I want that to happen forever and ever and ever. So just looking at these buttons on my screen, which one do you think I'm going to need to use? That's right, the forever one. So I need to drag that. And as you can see, it goes around all of that code in the middle. OK, let's just try that out. So at the moment, you can see that the code is being replicated on the stage. We can see that the sprite is appearing and disappearing. So my code works. It doesn't have any bugs in it. But it's a, it's a pretty easy game when the ghost is staying still. So we need to make the ghost move to different places. So when it appears on the screen, when it shows, we want it to go to a random position. As you can see, I've clicked back onto motion and I've got a go to random position box. So I'm going to move that and put it in here. I'm going to test it to see if it works though. As you can see now, when it shows, it goes to a different position on the screen each time, which will make it a little bit harder to catch the ghost. If you would like to, you can have a little experiment with the different motion blocks and you can see, is there a different way that you can make the sprite go to lots of different positions? At the moment, we have just got an animation. We can't click on the sprite. So we need another trigger so that something else happens. So we need to go back to events, 
and we need to add in another block of code. When this sprite is clicked, so when it's clicked, it means that the sprite has been called. So when it's clicked, we want the sprite to disappear. So we need to go back into looks, scroll down, and we want the sprite to hide. Now let's see that to see if it's looking a little bit more like a game. So I'm going to try and click on it. Oh, I clicked on it and it disappears. Every time I click on my sprite, it disappears, which tells me that that code works. OK. Now let's add a sound when it is clicked. So when this sprite is clicked, it's going to hide. And now we want it to make a sound. So I'm going to say play sound or space ripple. Let's see what this sounds like. I quite like that sound. So I'm going to start my animation again. And then every time I click on it, it makes this sound. OK, I'm pretty happy with my animation at the moment. It's starting to look a little bit more like a game. If you don't like that sound, though, remember, you can go into sounds. And you can click on choose a sound. And you can choose a different sound that you would like it to be. I'm going to keep mine with the space ripple, though, because I quite like it. To make it even more like a game, we are going to add a score. Now, setting a score can be quite complicated. So the first thing we need to do is we need another trigger because it's another set of instructions. It's another algorithm. So I'm going to use when the green flag is clicked because this can happen at the same time that the score is happening. I now need to go into variables and I need to make a variable. It now says new variable name. I'm going to call it score and then click OK. As you can see now, a little box has popped up in the corner saying score. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to set my variable, but I'm going to rename it score, set the score to zero. That just tells us that each time the game restarts, the score will always go back to zero. This time, we need to now create an algorithm that tells us what's going to happen when we click the sprite. When we click the sprite, we're going to want that score to go up so that the person playing knows how many times they have successfully caught the ghost. I'm going to create another algorithm just to make it a bit simpler. But if you wanted to, you could start putting your algorithms together. So, for example, where it says when the green flag is clicked and it says it twice, you could program this into this algorithm. And for our next one, I'm going to use another when this sprite is clicked. So if you don't want to do the same as me, this algorithm that I'm going to create, you can add onto this algorithm here. So when the sprite is clicked, I want the score to change by one. So I'm going to go back to variables and I'm going to have change. It's not my variable anymore. It's my score by one. Now let's try that. The green flag. As you can see on the screen, each time I click onto my sprite, my score goes up by one. The final thing I'm going to do is create a timer. So I'm going to have another trigger 
Remember, because it's a green flag clicked, you could add it all into this block of code here. But I'll let you experiment with that, just so that you can clearly see the steps that I'm doing. So when the green flag is set, is clicked, I need to set a time. So I go back to variables and I'm going to make a new variable. This time it's going to be a timer. So when it's clicked, I want my timer to be on zero. So at the moment, my timer is set to zero, but I want to give them 10 seconds. So I'm going to change that number to 10 and then test it. My timer is now on 10 seconds. I now want it to count down. So I need a repeat until button. So here's a repeat button but it has to say repeat until, and that goes underneath. Now, it's got a funny little missing gap here. So if I click onto operators, I want it to repeat until it reaches zero. But at the moment, I haven't told the computer what I want to reach zero. So I need to go back in my variables and drag in my timer. It's going to set the timer to 10 and then it's going to repeat the, the next steps until the timer is on zero. I'm going to use a wait button. So I want it to wait for one second and then I want it to count down. So I'm going to go back to variables, change the timer by minus one, because I want it to get one second less each time. It's going to wait a second and then it's going to reduce the number. Wait a second, reduce the number as it counts down in seconds. I finally want to go back into control and underneath I want to stop everything. When that timer has finished counting down, I want the game to stop. OK, let's see whether my score and my timer work all together now. So my score's working, I can see my timer counting down. And then when the timer gets to zero, the game automatically stops. OK, we are going to stop there. That's everything that I'm going to show you. If you think the game's too easy and you've enjoyed making it, you could make the timer less than 10 seconds. You could make the sprite appear for a shorter amount of time. So instead of staying on the screen for one second, maybe it could stay on for a shorter amount of time. You could also make the sprite smaller by going into costumes and changing the size of it, which might make it harder to click on. I hope you have fun and I can't wait to teach you something else next week. Bye!